Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to be showing you the top 10 most nostalgic art tames so without further ado let's get straight into it. In at number 10 I have got the Thyla and the reason why I'm putting this creature here is I just think it is such a useful one and it really did shake up the space of arc when this thing released as obviously it didn't come out with the base game in 2015 it was still in early access of course and it was for a while but this was a healthy inclusion to the game and people really did love this creature when it came out and they still really love it now it has definitely stood the test of time and people have a lot of nostalgia with this creature for obvious reasons one, it has been in the game for quite a while now, so there's been a lot of time to use these creatures, and they're so useful and great anyway. Everyone remembers when they were introduced into the game, as it really did shake up everything, especially in boss fights at the time, because they were allowed in then. Obviously, then they did have to be banned for their wall climbing abilities, but still, you know, that was a really nice time in the past. And with these creatures still being great to this day, and people having great memories with this creature it really does make sense why it is on this list and obviously why i've put it on this list they also do the bleed ability as well they are great combat creatures truly truly amazing tames they can climb any kind of wall or vertical surface they are fantastic i'm so glad wildcard added them to the game and they really did shake up the island a little bit continuing on we have got the therizinosaurus and no it's not because it said it was unlocked at level 69 nice Great inclusion, but that is not the only reason why I put it on this, but definitely, you know, at heart, it's still a fact term, all right? Either way, these creatures, I'm pretty sure, were in the game reasonably early on. I don't think they were out uh, when it released, but I'm not actually quite sure with the time of these creatures. I've just remembered for a while, I have loved these creatures as general gatherers. Yes, you can use them for the dragon boss fight. They're great for that. But I love their ability to gather fiber. And at the time, I'm not sure where the moss chops was in the grand scheme of things. I didn't really use any of those things. I remember just killing those things for hide. I didn't really use them. The only time I have used them is for organic polymer from Kairuku. So that's the only use I've got out of the moss chops. Doesn't have enough nostalgia for me, of course, to be on the list. But the Therry was my go-to fiber gatherer. And also, it's a pretty good berry gatherer as well. And calling it the Chickle Chicken was something which really does make this thing a lot more memorable if the creature has got a funny nickname it is just going to become a lot more memorable and sort of a lot kinder to people as well and kinder in their minds and this really does fulfill that it's a great creature which is capable of loads of gathering and that is why it's so respected in me and that is why i find it to be a really nostalgic arc tame so the ut is a prime boss creature but actually, when it first released, I know it's a bit of a later one, which is why I'm kind of putting it back. I think I'm pretty sure it was a 2017 or 2018 creature, something around that. Pretty confident it is 2017 though, rather than 2018. I remember it coming out around the time Aberration, Aberration, sorry, was released. And I really like these things as a general carnivore. Obviously, I did use them in boss fights for their courage raw. That was just a really nice thing to have. But I loved using them just as the essence of a carnivore because they were fast, agile, mobile, and they did a lot of damage. Their health is quite decent, and their stamina isn't the worst thing in the world. Yes, at least Spino was a kind of sort of better carnivore in my eyes, but I found this to be better just for land travel. I don't really know the particular reasons why I decided it, but I just liked it so much and i still love it to this day you might just say well spino can do everything and spino could pretty much do everything in terms of travel that the ut could do probably even better but for me the fact that it was so useful in bosses even though it was a late creature this did make quite a massive difference considering the stage of the game it came out to me and that is why i put it on this list and it's still far back enough that the nostalgia is definitely there with this thing okay, at number seven we have got the rex and i find that the come on with the rex it is just such a well-known dinosaur it's probably one of the most popular dinosaurs in the earth or on the world even uh, probably even the most popular everyone that knows what a dinosaur is will know what a t-rex is probably a stego and a triceratops as well and it really does stand to that in arc the rex has a lot of nostalgia they have obviously gone through a model change since release but they've been in the game 
right since the beginning. They have been that team that people tend to look up to in the early days of ARK. Now they're not really looked up to a lot actually, which is a bit of a shame because there are a lot of other creatures which are just completely changed the space of ARK. ARK is a very different game now to what it was in 2015. Yes, for the better, but in some ways I might say for the worse as well, but that is what ARK 2 is trying to amend and ASA tried for a little bit, but then kind of failed because you've got to keep it how it is nowadays. The world's moved on and in my opinion, it's moved on to a sort of a better place. But obviously the nostalgia factor is going to make everything in the past pretty much seem better than what you're dealing with now because it gets rid of all the bad stuff and then you've got all the the good times that you had and at the time you probably didn't know that there would be nostalgic moments but they definitely were but yeah this creature king of boss fights really is a valuable time to have in any given boss fighting scenario and general attack in combating scenario as long as uh, there's not too much mobility involved as it does really struggle with that. Talking about the Spino, which obviously I did in the previous two, I think, UT Rhinos is when I was talking about this thing. Either way, the Spino does hold a strong place in my heart for a nostalgic tame. These were kind of what I sought after even more than the Rex. I don't know if that was just me, but I thought the Spino as a bigger, more powerful creature, they didn't have as much health as the Rex and they still don't, but they have a heck of a lot more mobility. Back then they didn't have the hydration buff and they couldn't stand up on their hind legs, but I still love these things to death and use them in boss fights. Hugely, I used it actually a bit more than the Rex, I would say in my opinion. I do use Rexes more now, but mainly I do actually use the Deinonychus, which is not on the list because it's not quite old enough for that nostalgia factor, so I am definitely sticking to the older bunch for this list, of course. Like, come on, you've got to stick to those pro probably pre-extinction creatures, I'm going to say. All of these creatures are uh, aberration, aberration, sorry, or sooner. In fact, probably even sooner than that, really. The UT is a sort of outlier. But obviously now they have a TLC, they've been updated further. The Spino is really a great, neat little creature to have to ride around on and to take anywhere. If any of your mobility needs, they're great in the water, great on the land. Sadly, they can't do any kind of crazy acrobatics and things that you get some of the new creatures to do. But they really don't need that. At heart, they are still that very mobile carnivore that we all know and love and they've been around for so long the nostalgia is definitely there with a creature like this and i really really do enjoy using this thing still to this day they have definitely stood the test of time and are very much a nostalgic art team then at number five we have got the stegosaurus and i'm putting this creature here as the stego was my first kind of like adventurous tame you could say in a way or like maybe difficult tame it took about two hours to tame one of these things up i think it was like a level one or level two it was a uh, yeah it was really it was a very exciting moment we'll say in my arc career obviously no kind of career actually came from it at that point but now it is sort of a it's sort of a career but not really either way going back it took two hours to tame this thing was my most impressive team at the time and um, I'm pretty sure I got that stego killed by some raptors or a carno or something like that which uh yeah wasn't the fondest thing that's ever happened to me but you know arc is arc and you know uh, arc is going to keep being arc in those ways obviously again like the spino these things are now the TLC and it makes them even more nostalgic in a way because now they've been added to more and it makes them feel like they're in the modern age while still being that nostalgic art creature i know a lot of you will probably be saying like where's the parasol the triceratops i'll give them a brief honorable mention here at the number five spot because they do deserve to be here in some aspect just not for me but i know loads of people like the parasaurs and all of that they are like peak nostalgia and actually there'll be one honorable mention further on in the list which is actually going to be right at the end of the list and it's going to be a sneaky number zero but i'll let you wait for that and you'll figure out what it is now the baryonyx obviously wasn't in arc when it released but i'm pretty sure it was a similar period uh, to the thyla when the redwood spine released and obviously the swamp spine released and then we got ourselves the baryonyx i'm pretty sure that's how the chronology chronology worked sorry i couldn't 
Get that out of my mouth for some reason. Don't know why that was such a difficult word to say. Either way, the Baronet was the king of caving. Previously, we'd used Sabres. Another great honourable mention there if you were thinking of that creature. But yes, after this thing came out, the Barry was the king. And it still kind of really is the king. Yes, you can use Shadow Mage and things like that. But obviously, that's going to make it on the list. It's too recent of a tame. But still, very good for caving. Either way, the Barry was the king of caving at the time. And as far as I'm concerned, it still pretty much is top of its league. It is very mobile. It is the right size to fit into pretty much any cave that you could think of. And they are fast, agile swimmers, meaning the underwater caves were very easy to do as well. They can stun creatures up to the size of a Megalodon as well with that tail ability. Just truly a nice thing to have. But yes, the fact that they could cave really effectively and was kind of something new and novel really did make them stand out to me. And I still use these things to this day. And they really were great creatures for me. And I still love them so much. And they really are something of what makes my art playing my art playing. In number three, we have got the Carnotaurus. Maybe an unpopular opinion, as you might be saying. Well, the Aloe is just so much more nostalgic. Did come a little bit later on. But, you know, your opinion is your opinion. For me, the Carno is that creature where I'm like, it is just the one, okay? The Carnotaurus has been just through everything with me, through every single map that I've played, pretty much, actually, basically, or pretty, actually, I'm just going to say all of them downright, unless the Kano didn't spawn on the map. I have had myself a Kano, and I have prized that Kano. I've been naming them Meatball the whole time as well. I did name them Carny Dave a little bit because of Squid's Arc series, but then I, I named them Meatball after that, which is kind of what Carnotaurus means from Latin translated into English. It's a bit of a a rough translation but it's it's pretty much that or it's like meat lizard or flesh lizard or flesh bull something something along those lines either way Carnotaurus a very nice creature which has also undergone TLC you'll find a lot of these creatures actually have apart from the next one on the list actually but you'll find out where that is when it's that time but yet yeah, now they have the bleed ability which they didn't have before and obviously that comes with a second headbutt attack and that's pretty much all the TLC I had as far as they had as far as I'm concerned which really does make them even better creatures that I find they are quite fast agile carnivores for their size maybe so the aloe is more fast and more agile fair point and you could say that they're a better creature and fair point on that too but for the nostalgia factor for me this always tops the aloe and I'll pretty much always go for a carno over an aloe for the nostalgia factor and I just really like using them and I find myself to be quite good and useful and effective when using them and I'll continue to use them and for that they have to be on the list for me. In at number two we have got the Giga and when the Giga released which is still 2015 it really did make quite a big difference. So did the Quetzal in the same year as well. Another honourable mention which I could have put into this list, but it didn't make as big of a difference to me as the Giga, and I'm sure many of you would agree with that. While the Quetzal was cool and you could still level movement speed and you could build a base on the back of the thing, this was the biggest carnival we'd seen it yet, and we thought nothing really could get bigger. Well, the Titanosaur came out afterwards, but, you know, we didn't know that was happening, and it was just so OP and so, so cool to tame. You don't even care what the level is. You just got one, you went out there, you found one, you got one maybe named it tiny tim if you watch the squid video on it you know if you know you know that is actually probably one of my most re-watched art videos the nostalgia in that thing truly truly great video if i do remember i might put a card up on screen and link it there but if not maybe go search for it just look up i realistic squid uh, arc giga and you'll find it. it's like episode 50 of the original arc series on that honestly basically the best video that youtube has ever seen in my opinion in terms of the nostalgia content but yeah they really had a new perspective they dealt so much damage and their rage ability was something which was seen as quite cool and in a way a little bit scary and coming in at number one we have got the argentavis and this really does top the nostalgia list for me it is just such a nice creature to use it is very ergonomic it was designed with a lot of thought put into it and for that i really do love it as a creature it also has seen a tlc since it's been released as well kind of weird to think that the giga 
hasn't, at least as far as I'm concerned, it hasn't still got that atrocious stamina and all of those things with it. But I guess the car credit to Soros is the sort of TLC of the Giga, if you will. But yes, this has seen a TLC. Well, I'm pretty sure that added all of the weight reduction stuff, something along those lines. At least I'm pretty sure, confident that it added the saddle as a smithy if it didn't have that already because I think the Castoroides was the first creature to do it and then it adopted it and that regen buff was definitely not present. Actually, they might have had the um, the weight reduction stuff back then. Either way, I did use these things for a lot of metal farming because although the Tyranodon, another honourable mention you could put on this list as well, was a great creature, I didn't find them really to be very nice to use at the time. Like I was like, yes, first flight and that is really a big achievement in arc but the RG just felt like the next step and the thing that was really memorable for me and once I got one I never stopped using one and to this day still use them. Again not really sure with the chronology of whenever the TLC came out but to this day I still really use them and love all their abilities. You can even carry an extra creature in their mouth which I'm confident they didn't have before the TLC. Just honestly great great creatures. And in at number zero I've decided to put the dodo because does anything get better than the dodo? It's probably the first creature you'll see in Ark. Maybe unless the Dilo's there, but you know, the Dilo's not the creature you remember. The creature you remember is the dodo. This little cute thing that runs around on the beaches. It is the pinnacle of Ark. The Ark logo and the Ark wallpaper should all just have the dodo at the forefront. And you've got the dodo rexes and the dodo wyverns, but nothing stands in comparison to the great original dodo. And that is why obviously it deserves to be king of this list 100 percent the top 10 best underwater arc teams in at number 10 we have got the mosasaurus and i'm putting this thing here because really in today's age it isn't the height of underwater travel like it used to be the mosasaurus is in some need of some tlc it does lack a lot of uh, inventiveness in its abilities but it still is going to be a good underwater tame and it's deserving of the list. The plesiosaur is just slightly outside the bracket so that creature is not making the list today but the mosasaurus just manages to squeeze in. It's not my favourite underwater tame by any means but you can definitely get around on it quite easily and there's a lot of good mobility and motion that you can get out of this creature. Like he's still going to use a wyvern even though they've got a bad turning circle because they're great flyers. It's kind of similar to this thing but it's not quite the same because they aren't really as good as something like a wyvern. A wyvern is a much better creature but wyverns can't go underwater so that's besides the point really. So next up we have got the Ichthyosaurus. I was going to consider putting the Tuso in this spot as well. I don't really use it much as an underwater creature but I guess I'll give it a brief honourable mention here because it still is quite a nice underwater tame but it didn't make it on the list quite for me but still you know it has good mobility and it is also quite a nice dealer of damage. The Ichthyosaurus however is just a speed demon when it comes to underwater travel. Yes maybe not the fastest underwater creature we've got on our list today but still one that can really get around and most things won't be able to keep up with this thing whatsoever which is why I like this as an underwater tame. Although it's not really going to be great for any kind of attacking or heavy damage dealing, that's really not what it's here for, especially considering it is a passive tame. It is one of the easiest creatures to tame on the list today, so it is definitely very deserving of this place as considering how easy this thing is to tame and also just generally how much travel and mobility you can get out of this creature it is insane and in my opinion because of this I'm putting them above the Mosasaur because the Mosasaur really does need some TLC like I mentioned before whereas this is not really in any need of TLC it's very good how it is and it is so much easier to tame and so much more worthwhile. Coming up next we have got the Megalodon and this is one of those tames where I think they're actually quite underrated. Yes it's not going to be the best underwater tame in existence, there are some creatures which I would definitely prefer over this. But I feel like considering how long it's been around for and actually what abilities it still holds, it is a very viable option. Maybe not for PvP as that does tend to be quite a different world and there are very specific tames that you'll be using for most of the time, at least that's my understanding overall. The Megalodon doesn't really come to too much play in that, but underwater creatures don't really 
anyway, and with this creature dealing the bleed ability, that is something which I really do hold home for PvE players, as it really does make a huge difference. It does for PvP as well, but again, it's not really relevant in that scene, at least as far as I'm concerned. The bleed ability just allows a new dimension of damage to be dealt with this creature, and on top of it, it is pretty mobile, and it just makes it a nice, relatively small creature for defeating the Moda on Gen 1, especially considering you've got the X variants of these creatures and just general little fighting machines. In at number 7, we have got the Bills of Bufo, and come on, this creature is definitely deserving of a spot on the list. It is small, relatively compact, and it is a dream in underwater scenarios. The speed that you can get out of this thing is absurd, and also the fact that it doesn't necessarily spawn in the water off the get-go means that it could potentially be easier for you to tame. The only real downside with that in this argument is that they do spawn in the swamp, but as long as you can find one that's, you know, more on the outskirts and still a reasonably high level, you're going to have a good time. Even lower level ones are still going to have that same speed, they're just going to sacrifice a lot on weight and health and some other important things that you might need in the ocean biome because there are some pretty deadly creatures out there and you know it's a it's a pretty harsh environment so i would definitely be careful if you're on a lower level mount they also are just insane cementy paste gatherers that's not really going to make a huge difference uh, for underwater travel although you can just farm trilobites with these things and that is my all-time favorite way to get cementy paste with these creatures it's just it's just the go-to for me and i really love it for its speed its overall general agility and just being a relatively easy tame to get it just just an all-round great tame now we all know the maywing is great when it comes to general mobility it pretty much tops every list that you could possibly put it on in that genre well it really does do a great job as an underwater tame and most people don't expect it First, it can glide across the top of the surface of the water, and I find that to be quite an effective, useful ability, escaping danger that may be in the depths. And I know usually they don't couple up all the way, but if you've got some jellyfish or some electric eels, yes, they can still shock you while on the surface, but you can get away much, much quicker. They also are just really fast swimmers as well. You probably wouldn't expect it out of these creatures, but trust me, they can definitely go for it, and you'll not be let down by the speed and agility and just general mobility that you get out of these things in any environment that being underwater or not which is why i'm putting them so highly on the list as well because they're not only the best underwater tame really that could fit in this spot on the list obviously not the best underwater tame out there because there's still five more creatures to go but they're just so great in their ability to be great in the water and then great on the land as well there's just a lot of versatility with these creatures and hence why they're so high on the list because you might say the meg or the bills is just a better underwater mount but with the versatility this is doing much better in at number five we've got the rhino gnatha and i feel like a lot of people forget that this is sort of an underwater creature i know you probably wouldn't use it for that it is an insanely great mount for general pvp use it can wreck bases and although its health can be pretty temperamental in some scenarios it has been proven to be highly successful in that environment also just from a pve perspective they are great for picking up a wealth of creatures of huge sizes like rexes and parasitheriums they also have a lot of speed and a lot of weight so it makes them really amazing for metal gathering it's just such a nice thing to have. Yes, we all know and love the RG, but the Rhino Ganassa, in a lot of cases, is just generally the nicer creature to use. And it is an insanely great fast swimmer. If you've ever taken this thing into the water, then you'll know you can still get a lot of speed and agility with this thing, and you still have all those abilities and heavy damage dealing that the Rhino Ganassa obviously has. I'm not sure if it has oxygen, or not i think it would considering what it is well it does have an oxygen stat obviously so you probably have to be a little bit careful of that i haven't been in the underwater environment for too long with this thing i've just merely gone to skim down to some caves and things so i haven't really paid attention to it but again that's something which you're probably going to want to pay attention to and their tone method is something which you could consider quite exciting as well which adds to the creature being so good i don't know what it is but with 
me if they have an exciting tone method and the creature has an exciting tone method then it really makes them even more fun to use once they've tamed especially if it's like a lengthy process it's not too difficult really for the running and after it's way easier to like the reaper although it kind of follows the same tone method because it impregnates a dino of your choice choose a bronto really i think it's the the best one out there i think for effectiveness reasons something like that it's it's way easier when it's not you and it's a creature and then you have to get all those resources and serve the xp which you get from the reaper which i don't think is as good of a system but you know still honestly it's not the hardest time in the world especially if you prepare and it's still a pretty cool one and i think it just adds to the general ambience of this creature on top of everything it already does so continuing on we have got the spinosaurus and it is no doubt that the spino is a really great underwater creature i'm going to give the barry a brief mention here as i haven't actually put the baryonyx on the list but i would put it around this spot as well i just think the spino is the superior underwater creature just generally this thing has more speed than the barry and obviously it has the added damage and it's still really agile too and considering the underwater cave entrances and underwater caves are so massive on the island anyway you're not going to struggle to get a spino down and in there it is ridiculously easy and you're a heavy damage dealer you just need to be careful of obviously all the jellyfish and the electric eels and the oxygen which comes with the spino as well they're your only real downsides but just considering how mobile this creature is and versatile again like the maywing it's a better underwater creature than the maywing by the way because of just all the added damage and defense which is something the maywing lacks and it is just such a versatile general travel mount as well it's great on the land it's great for boss fights it's just great for going around the map obviously being a nice travel mount and it can deal hefty amounts of damage especially considering it can stand up on its hind legs ever since the tlc which is just a nice neat ability for it to have and on top of that which i haven't even mentioned yet which i probably should have earlier they have the hydration buff too so when they're in the water they deal even more damage and just have a even better buff applied to them when they're in the environment so it's going to make them even more powerful and even more formidable to all other things that will be uh, in the ocean trying to get into your way but really do be careful of the electric eels and jellyfish you might underestimate them but if you get yourself caught in a stun lock it's not going to be a good time for you or your spino but apart from that really gold star creature deserves to be here in at number three we have got the Battlesaurus. come on it does need to be here its immunity to electric eels and jellyfish is really something insane should i give an honorable mention to the fastalosuchus as well as i've heard that has the same ability i haven't tested it enough to warrant it being on the list but actually i do want you to comment down below if you use the fastalosuchus in an underwater environment how does that actually act because I want to know and actually I will test it out throughout the uh, the week because I'm playing around with some of the new creatures more. But yeah, comment that down below is there something which I definitely like to know. The Basilo is really an ideal caving creature though. Although yes, it does have that depth limit which you need to be careful of. The Im immunity to electric eels and jellyfish and also just general speed make it ideal for the job. Also, I'm pretty confident it doesn't have an oxygen stat as well. They can jump to and make little rainbows if that's your thing as well. They can also make oil on top of this. So if you want some slow oil farms, it's really not the fastest thing in the world. Then um, you can have the bass on your side. And obviously the X-Bassler is on Gen 1 if you want an even better version. Next up, we have got the Shadow Main. And I have to put this creature here because in my opinion, it is really one of those good ones. It has the hydration buff from a start like the Spino, but it is much smaller and in my opinion, much more agile and it still does all of that heavy dealing damage on top of this as well it does have a pack buff so if you're going down with some friends or you just bring some more along with you then you can have an even bigger advantage in underwater environments i'm pretty sure they do have an option buff though so be careful with that they have natural armor and require no saddle so that's an even bigger benefit less resources to get these things and also just come on these creatures really do pack a punch. I've probably said it earlier because it, it just needs to be mentioned, really. Come on. They deal so much damage. They're so fast and agile in the water, packed with abilities. They have that hydration buff. 
So they're going to be great for underwater caving, great for underwater bosses, and great for anything that you might want to do in an underwater environment in Ark. And that is why they deserve to be in the number two spot, in my opinion. So let's get on to the creature that actually tops the list today. In number one, I have put the Bloodstalker. It was there the last time I think I did one of these videos, but I've obviously updated the list a bit more now, and I will continue to update my list as obviously the channel goes forward. But this is still topping the list of the best underwater mounts out there. It is just so agile on land and in water, it really does add to the versatility of this creature. You can also see all the aggros of the tames around you, so you can see what creature to aggro to to easily evade danger before it even comes near to you. And they are zippingly fast in an underwater environment. Although maybe they don't have the damage capacity to defeat bosses, they still have the damage uh, available to easily kill quite a lot of creatures around them. You'd be surprised how much damage a Bloodstalker can actually deal if you really put them to work in a scenario like this. If you get a good Bloodstalker, you're going to be having a good time with that good mobility, good damage, and great versatility as you don't need to simply cry out your creature or something like that when you hop out of the water. You can just keep traveling around the map with these things, and obviously they're just useful for general travel and just around the map they are nice companions to have too they really are very very versatile tames this was a versatility list they would definitely be up there the only thing obviously they lack is you're not going to be killing any modas with these things and they don't have any upgraded variants like some of the creatures that i've mentioned on the list but they're already so good and just so overpowered in my opinion that i think they deserve the number one spot but comment down below your thoughts if you feel like Maybe there should be another creature in at number one spot. And actually, what is your favourite underwater mount out there? But anyway, that is the end of today's video. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. As always, comment down below if you didn't agree with this list. As I would like to know your thoughts. And if you didn't agree with this list, put your 10 actually in the comments below. I'll see you all later.